Monday morning, 6.15. Everybody's getting going. Morning. That's what it is. Morning. Got this driveway to do. You can see it's quite long. We're down here in Williston. So this is a long serpentine driveway. And we are going to be tearing it out today. We're also going to be tearing out this walkway. My buddy Dave's coming in to do a new walkway. We've got to do a trench drain across the top of the walkway, connect the gutter, and there's a catch basin behind that bush. So this thing is in really bad shape. It's a very concave from 25 years worth of people driving on it. So today's plan, get it torn out, get the asphalt taken down to the plant and dropped off. I've only got one truck to put on it right now, so gonna go a little slow but we'll get it done I'm gonna run the excavator for now until Chad finishes up his job and then he's gonna come down and take over for me so let's get started sounds like Dave's already here spirit of not messing up your base if you keep your truck and your material and your machine all on the hard ground the whole time you're not going to mess up your base so the goal in the end is to have all the asphalt out and the base looking like this base here where you've just peeled the asphalt off if you start stacking your scraped up material on your base material because you do it in the wrong order, then you're going to have a lot more base work to do. So you always start at the bottom, work your way out to the curb, which is pretty much how you should do all jobs. And scrape your asphalt up onto the asphalt that hasn't been disturbed, then you can use it to 
some scrape against to keep everything clean. And if your machine is turning around on asphalt the whole time, it's not messing up the base. And the truck staying on the asphalt is the best traction for them. Less apt to start spinning and or get stuck. And you just peel your way out. And in the end, the next guy just has to come in and roll it, fine grain it a little bit. This one we're gonna have to add some base up by the front door because the shape of it is so bad. But either way, in the end, we have a lot less work to do. Now we've got the bed cameras and all the trucks so we can see exactly what's going on. And when it starts to look full, David can look at the camera and tell me if there's pockets. You want to get the most out of each trip to the plant, even though the plant is only 10 minutes away here. It's easy to think you're full and then only send 10 yards to the plant when you could have shoved 16 or 18 in. The stuff's not very heavy, there's a lot of air. You got a baby plate compactor? You don't have one? There's one on Marketplace, cheap. A whacker one. Good morning. Back here in Williston. We are on a 104 ton job doing this driveway. It's gonna be a long day. Got two trucks on it. We're only about six miles from the plant, which makes it nice. So two trucks should be okay. And uh, just getting started.
Boom. Hundred and four ton on the dot. What's going on? Uh, what a long week, guys. This has been a very productive week. But what's very weird is while other people in other parts of the country are saying that they're running out of work, we have had a huge influx of work. And I'm very happy for that, that's for sure. But we got paving jobs coming out of the woodwork, people that... I've never heard from before or people that we've quoted six months ago um, a lot of contractors wanting us to come in and pave which is awesome so I'm very happy with how much stuff's coming in and a lot of dirt work and a good amount of stuff that'll take us deep into the winter time uh, with digging um, we're gonna demo a link belt 145 next week on a couple jobs they're coming in very aggressive on their pricing. It's the same salesman that sold us our Malden paver. And uh, their price is like 60000 cheaper than CAT. So certainly worth taking a look at. So we'll be uh, trying that. You'll see that here in a couple of videos, I would imagine. And uh, it looks like a nice machine. From what I understand, it's the same thing as a case. And it's the same thing as Kubota's prototype they showed us, was it early winter, uh, they showed us a 14 and a half ton Kubota. So we'll be testing that. It's a 145X4, zero tail, essentially the equivalent to the Volvo 145 that we tested and the 315 that we rented and tried out. So pretty excited about that. But uh, this truck has been absolutely awesome. I've been driving it for the last week, week and a half. And, um, I, you know, I hate the term game changer, but it's absolutely what it is. Um, you see it being used in the videos. This past week I delivered three or four loads of stone with it. Conveyed the stone out of the back, no problem. Um, I was told not really to haul anything bigger than an inch and a quarter. So um, that's kind of what we're limiting it to. And we got the cameras in. We got the... Uh, just got the glad hands on for trailer brakes so this week Matt is going to be um, doing the paving or the paver trucking I should say with Josh so he's gonna be towing with this thing so that Chris can work with us on some dirt jobs that we got going on but we had a little bit of downtime a week or so ago when it was raining so we brought in Two loads of our winter sand and we will get probably five more and mix it up I think I'm gonna bring in our second shipping container and do a hoop house between them and pave where that's gonna sit so we can put sand and salt and stuff in a nice bin but we're waiting on a couple of plowing contracts that are pretty huge and if we get those then we're going to have to stock probably four loads of pure salt this winter. So that's something we got to consider when we're figuring out what we're doing and where we're doing it. Last year we put four and a half loads of sand salt mix in that shipping container. And it worked out pretty good. So, um, yeah, I think we've given up on selling the black truck. So... I'm gonna keep it run it this winter and at some point during the off season I'm gonna have the cab painted and trying to decide what we're doing with the box I don't know if we're just gonna paint the box um, or what we're gonna do the really only downside of that box is that the bottom tub is rounded so when you're trying to scoop asphalt out of it you can really only scoop down to the bottom eight inches or so and you end up leaving a couple of ton 
in the bottom so that's kind of a, the only weird thing about that truck but surprisingly enough you know we spent twenty five thirty thousand dollars on it mechanically and uh, she's doing pretty good so this winter get it painted figure out the body air horn stopped working it sounds like one of my dogs squeak toys it's just it's like ah. um, and the oil pan needs to be replaced it's leaking quite a bit and we go through probably a quart maybe a little bit less than a quart a week so we just have to keep after it finally got the grill lights wired up the other day which is good so she's been going pretty strong I think for inspection next year there's one tire that needs to be replaced otherwise it's pretty good but uh, yeah Chris has been running the hell out of this thing and it's been going pretty good I don't think we've had any issues with this thing lately um, this coming week we've got five paving jobs to do and two or three excavation jobs to do so it's been nice having two tag trailers just being able to move everything we need to move everywhere has been very handy the tires on the 262 are completely bald now which is great because when you're on pavement you can spin around smoothly but the minute you're on dirt and you're trying to push something it's not that great so that thing is probably going to be put somewhere this winter with a blade on it for plowing we've got those winter wheels and tires for it so it'll have a dedicated job this winter employees have been good the past couple weeks guys are doing really well on paving crew Josh and David and uh, Gavin have really started to click and they're definitely getting more efficient running this new truck with that live bottom and using it to fill the paver saves a lot of time and we're getting to the point where we're getting really clean when it comes to conveying into the paver and not dumping a bunch on the ground so I know things will get better as time goes on with that and uh, but I would like to think that we'll be paving this whole month and maybe into November next week it shows 50s and low 60s for the highs so hopefully that stays that way for a while because be nice just to be nice to go all the way to Thanksgiving but I don't know if that's actually gonna happen but anyways appreciate you guys watching and catch you on the next one